I'll take it. Now what happens if I hit it into the desert? Then you just leave it. <laughs> You don't have trees, though, so. Yeah, but the desert's all around you. <laughs> oh, straight up. Kevin Lewis is the director of tourism for Washington County, a small, booming area in a remote part of southwestern Utah. Not long ago, almost all of this was desert. Today, it's home to nearly 200,000 people going on half a million by 2065. Six million tourists come every year. <laughs> How many golf courses are there out here? There's 13 now, and then we just added one this year. Initially, there wasn't the thought of bringing people here for recreation, for golf, you know. Right, well, it almost suggests we've, we've conquered nature in a way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It really is remarkably beautiful out here. But Washington County and its main city, St. George, have a much discussed problem. And it has to do with the part of nature they haven't quite conquered yet, water. The water worries in southern Utah are not going away. Most of the state is under a drought condition. An emergency meeting that has been recommended to talk about our drought system. To fix this, state and local officials want to build a pipeline from the Colorado River Reservoir at Lake Powell. It'll cost upwards of $2 billion. And if it's approved, it would deliver up to 28 billion gallons of water a year to St. George's own reservoir. Zach Renstrom is one of those leading the push. So people are all, this is all state park here. Is this low right now? Like how much water are we looking at? Is this, is this, is so this enough for St. George? That's a tough question. <laughs> so right now this reservoir is about 60% full. Uh, we started this year with it completely full. And then this summer has been a very, very dry summer, and so uh, we've dropped at 40%. Why do you feel like you need the Lake Powell Pipeline? As a water provider, we're always thinking about the future. When we look out, you know, 50, 60 years, we have an extremely rapidly growing community. We rank in the top in the, in the world of people wanting to move here. We have 35,000 uh, kids in our education system right now. And then we also look at, you know, climate change. And we start looking at what's the most reliable water source. And we just happen to be fairly close to the most reliable water source in the Western United States. That water source is the Colorado River. But the river is also the source of water for just about the entire Southwest. Zach Frankel is a conservationist who's been fighting the pipeline for years. The Lake Powell pipeline is a disaster. It is the largest new water project being proposed in the entire Colorado River Basin today, home to 40 million people. What would happen to the rest of water out west if this project is completed? Some of the most populous parts of the American West in Nevada, California, and Arizona will be impacted by having their water supply diverted upstream of them. Climate change has been increasing our air temperatures, not just in the summer, but in the winter as well. We have less snow in the headwaters. As the snowpacks have shifted and shrunken down, we have less water in our reservoirs. To give you an example of how bad it was, in 2000, the capacity of the Colorado River reservoirs was 94% full. Today in 2020, we're at about 50% full. Is there a case to be made that St. George really does need more water? The answer is absolutely no. There's no need for water in Washington County. Frankel thinks Washington County could solve its problems by reducing how much water it uses. The county goes through three times as much water as the national average, at cheaper rates than almost anywhere else in the West. The county says it's doing what it can, using recycled water as much as possible and complying with Utah's most recent conservation guidelines. But the debate isn't just about state guidelines and water rates. It's also about an essential fantasy of American life, that even amid climate change, the natural world can be made to accommodate us. So what's this one here? This home is a million five. St. George is a place that's growing fast, in part because of the ruggedness of its terrain. And yet its selling point is all the ways that landscape can be molded into the modern suburban dream. 
Is this real grass? It is real grass. <laughs> Can I see? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the real thing. Yep. All right. So it's 2430 square feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, as you can see, there's also grass in the backyard. Yeah, there's so, a lot. There's a lot of grass in this home. There is. Grass is a big selling point. It is for sure. Do you find that people who are looking to buy ask about water when they come out here? Most just assume that everything's fine. That there must be some right, yeah. <laughs> some magic thing that ma water's going to come forever. <laughs> How important is? the fact that you do have green grass to the, the growth of this community. It's very important, especially for the families that come and live here with all the golf courses here. We wouldn't have water to keep those going. So those would shut down. The parks would, would be just dirt. You'd have kids playing soccer on dirt. Nobody wants to do that. We need to have grass where kids can run around and play. They can't run around on the asphalt. You're in the desert and you're building these homes and it all requires a lot of water. So you have to build a, bring in a pipeline to bring the water here, and maybe it'd be better just to not develop in the middle of the desert? Sure, but then everyone still wants to be here. So what do you do? I guess we could say no more building. I, I've never heard of anyone doing that. That would be interesting to see what would happen when you just put a no build moratorium out there. Who knows? Maybe that's what you do. State and local officials don't think that's a fair choice for them to have to make. Utah has historically used less Colorado River water than other western states. Now, they say, it's finally time. The pipeline's last environmental impact study is due this summer, but with legal challenges, it could be years before it's actually built. Is it absurd to build a pipeline all the way down to the middle of the desert so that a community here can just grow and grow and grow? So I guess our legislative and our local leaders have come and, and said, we want Washington County to grow. And, but the question is, is should pe people be having children or should people be moving into the Western United States? That's, that's a whole different debate. But here in Utah, considering those factors, our legislature came back and said, this is how we want to use our water. There's a conservation crisis in this country. There is a wasteful population that cannot be told that it's wasting water because it's so taboo. Our rivers and streams are drying up and with it is a legacy of fish and wildlife that we have been left by previous generations that we are happy to see go extinct so that we can overwater our streets, gutters, and grass landscapes. When you look at Washington County, do you see a county that's using disproportionately more water per capita than these other places? Or do you think it's actually probably roughly in line? I think it's roughly in line with other communities, Vegas, Albuquerque, Phoenix. Um, you do have to account for some of the landscaping that I think there are some, there's probably more lawns in St. George, more trees in St. George than you'd see in Albuquerque. But again, to get back kind of what you're asking, do they really need this water? So if they, they grow like they're projected to, and they tend to exceed the projections, that they're, they're gonna need additional water or they have to stop the growth. So it's kind of, it's an either or. You can either, they can either stop growing or they, they're gonna need more water. I think some conservation groups might look at that choice you offered and mm -hmm. say, maybe you should stop the growth. Yeah. And that's, that would be up to, up to the community. How big of the logic behind this project is, Utah is owed this much of this water and we're not using it. So we should take full advantage of what is available to us. Utah, we, we feel that it is our water and we have a right to develop it and that's part of what the compact set up was to, to ensure that it was divided up and that states could develop it on their own time frame. And so some states that were very rapidly growing, like California, quickly started using their entire supply. But there's other states, Utah, most of the upper basin states, in fact, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, have not developed all of their allocations yet because they are growing more slowly. We do view it as, as Utah's water and we have a right to it and, a, and the compact says that. But I wouldn't say this project is like an excuse to put that to use. It's, there's obviously a need and it, it makes sense for it to be used there. In a way, what I'm hearing you say, it's interesting, is, is we've been conservative in our water use all this time. These other states have been profligate, essentially. Why should we be punished now that we are deciding to make use of it? Right? Is, is that, does this feel like an unfair situation that Utah's being put in? It feels like 
we, this project is getting a lot of attention and, and it's, we, we feel like we're not the only ones. We're, all seven states want to use their, their allocation and put it to good use.